Okay, class, turn in your books. Atlantis Rising, The Struggle of Darkness and Light. To chapter 2, Atlantis Rises, page 18. And you can follow along in the second paragraph. Do you still believe that what you do not know will not hurt you? Do you trust that a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing? These are controlling thought patterns created to hold you in ignorance, and they have proven throughout history to be effective, since paradoxically many of your societies have embraced such expressions as wisdom. We suggest that it is what you do know, the light of knowledge, that frees you and we invite you to eliminate the negative thought implants of such colloquialisms from your programming. Your fearlessness lies in your ability to trust that knowledge is your liberation. Once again, as in the case of the last generation of Atlantis, earthquakes, continental shifts, and eruptions are shattering your realities and your limited knowledge of cosmic forces makes you fear more than ever for the future of your planet and the very prospects of humanity's survival. And yet, history has shown you that violent shifts of Gaia's land, masses in her polar orientations, devastating floods, fires, famines, are all a reflection of Earth's infinite cycles of transmutation, of form, and energy in the physical realm in which she has existed until now. Know that life cannot be annihilated, for within the consciousness of every living being, every cell, molecule, and atom is the seed, thought, of supreme being the primal will, which knows no purpose than to be. And so, life mutates and evolves, but never does the soul cease to exist, for all is an internal state of becoming in the universe. And I'll drink to that. Tea, anyone? everybody my name is Carletta Elston and welcome to my YouTube channel where I share my creativity and my thoughts on certain topics if you are new to my channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can get updates to all of my latest videos in this video I want to talk about my experience with a beetle and a spider and share with you the spiritual meaning behind spiders and beetles. Well, about a couple weekends ago, I was outside soaking up the weather and I received a visit. I looked down on my arm and I noticed a pretty turquoise beetle. I picked it up, I smiled and examined it and released it back into the wild on a plant near me. And shortly after that, I went out to my car and looked down in my lap again. I noticed a small baby spider about the same size as the beetle. And I knew immediately that this was a sign because, mind you, right before this, I was praying for signs from the universe. But my immediate reaction was to brush the spider off of me. And then I received a surge of remorse in my consciousness and I got to thinking and I received a message. This situation taught me how deep societal programming can manifest in us. And it can trickle down even to how we react to nature around us. 
if you think about it, society teaches us that spiders are something to be afraid of. On Halloween, spiders are depicted as scary and used to terrorize people. And the spider is commonly used in horror films the same way. And to be honest, I never thought about it in this deep manner until this happened. But when I brushed the spider off of me, something in me said, why did you just do that? This simple acquaintance with the beetle and spider can correlate to many aspects of life and how we can reject certain people or things based upon appearance or a form subconscious belief. But that very thing that we may be rejecting can be our blessing or a lesson. This experience taught me that I must not only embrace the light elements of life, but embrace the dark elements as well. Embrace the beauty of life as well as the ugly parts the comfortable and the uncomfortable. Nothing in life exists without a polarity. The world was created from darkness. First, there was darkness. Then the creator said, let there be light. Science also proves that the human body is made from stardust, dark matter, which directly connects us to the universe. We are made of both protons and electrons, both positivity and negativity. So dark and light, positive and negative are both necessary to exist. Now onto the spiritual meaning of beetles and spiders. So in Egyptian times, the beetle was referred to as the scarab, the guide of cosmic universe, the element of creation. It was also associated with the sun god, Capri, whose name means to become or transform. The scarab, or beetle, is a symbol of eternity, transformation, rebirth, and enlightenment. In nature, beetles help to pollinate flowers, which can produce fruits and seeds. The spider in Egypt was associated with the goddess Neith, the creator goddess. Her name means the terrifying one. Neith was also the mother of the creator, sun god, and later known as the mother and father of all things. The spider is the symbol of weaving of destiny. It symbolizes mystery, power, growth, and creativity. It is also a representation of the dark aspects of our personality, the part we are unconscious of and cannot see. In nature, spiders help to eliminate diseases and destruction of crops on farms. They also help to keep away roaches and pesky insects. So if you see a spider or a beetle, ask yourself, what is the universe trying to tell me? It could be that it's paying you a little visit to communicate with you. These insects are indicators of the spiritual realm and nothing to be afraid of, for it all serves a purpose. If you enjoyed this video today, be sure to give it a thumbs up. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in, 
and you're more than welcome to share your personal experiences with spirit animals and insects. I most definitely love to check it out. Alright, I thank you guys for tuning in and peace out until next time. <laughs>